I was covering the, the key concepts that would come from yeast. Yeast cells are single cells. They can live in a defined broth, and effectively all they do is grow, divide, grow, divide. They do all of the basic principle, the core processes that go on within human cells. They're very genetically amenable. They've got great cell biology, good imaging, and so they really have acted as a bit of a test tube in which we can, um, we can interrogate processes and find out the core principles which you can then apply to human cells. So the real power of the yeast is genetics, and genetics is so powerful, as we see in cancer, people end up with cancer because they have a genetic mutation. However, we, where we can make that work positively for us is if we are interested in a process, we've got no idea about what's going on and what's regulating that process, we can functionally identify strains that are effective in that process because they have a single mutation in a single gene. So we can identify cell division cycle mutants and we isolate temperature sensitive mutants where they're okay at one temperature, shift them to a high temperature and for whatever reason they no longer grow. Uh, sorry, they no longer divide. They keep on growing but they don't divide. And so effectively we can build up a library of these cell division cycle mutants and that acts as a starting point from which we can build up an understanding of the cell division cycle. So this was done in the 1970s by, principally by Lee Hartwell in the US and Paul Nurse in, uh, in Edinburgh. And Lee Hartwell was working on the budding yeast and Paul Nurse was working on the fishing yeast. And so by studying the, these mutants, they were able to define a map of the cell division cycle. And a number of key concepts emerged from those maps. And the first major concept, which is totally mirrored in human cells, was the concept of start. And what this is, is effectively yeast cells go round a cell division cycle, they go round a cell division cycle, but we can also challenge them to undergo sexual differentiation. And it turns out there's a little window in the cell cycle, really at the very beginning, before they start going around their cycle, where they can undergo all their sexual differentiation. Once they're past that window, they, can, they, they have to go all the way around before they can do it again. So that window is called start, and it's very similar to something called the restriction point in human cells. And this was discovered around the same time by a guy called Arthur Pardee. And what he was doing was putting serum onto quiescent um, tissue culture cells, and he put it on for defined periods. So put it on, remove it, put it on, remove it. And it turned out there was a point after which when you removed it, the cells just carried on and divided. And so that's equivalent to the start concept. And so these concepts were extended. The start concept came from the budding yeast. It turns out the fission yeast also has start, but the fission yeast defined a second control point, which happens just before the physical process of division, G to M boundary. And Paul Nurse showed that uh, this existed in fission yeast. And importantly, he showed that there was a single gene which was defective in both the start and the, the mitotic commitment. And even more excitingly, he showed that the gene that regulated start control in budding yeast, 100 million years evolutionary separate from fission yeast, it could work in fission yeast. And then he ultimately isolated the human equivalent, which we call CDK1 now, it was called CDC2 at the time. And so really, going from a point of not understanding how the cell cycles control, they defined a control point, two con a control point at start, a control point G2M, and then identified the molecules that control these transitions. But perhaps the most important contribution from yeast to our understanding of the cancerous state is the concept of checkpoints. And the concept of checkpoints emerged from Lee Hartwell's a seminal paper in 1989, Wynette and Hartwell, and they were interested in how do you stop the cycle when something's gone wrong. So it had been known that damage, DNA damage, would stop cell division cycle. And they really encapsulated this into a concept of the checkpoints, whereby there's a dependency relationship. You've got damage, you've got to stop division. So it's not a, a part of the core cell cycle. However, the damage will create a signal that goes through to arrest you at one of the rate limiting steps in the cycle, and that's a checkpoint concept. And checkpoint inhibitors are now being used extensively in uh, chemotherapy and being developed for further use.